very good morning, students. Bienvenidos de vuelta. Espero que hayan disfrutado un lindo fin de semana. I hope you enjoyed a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Now, let's get started. For those of you in smartphones, please open up your Google Classroom app. For my students on laptops or computers, please go to classroom.google.com. Once again, making sure that you are logged into your at students.texanscans.org account. So, let's go to where it says Sanchez English 1. As you can see, I've posted brand new material. And let's go to where it says, let's go down. Uh, you should have already completed all of the works for uh, Unit 1, Week 1, which is last week. If not, I've extended the um, due dates. That way you're able to get started. Entonces, para ustedes, si no han terminado, por favor, el trabajo o los trabajos de la semana pasada, favor de terminarlo ahora. Now, antes de comenzar esta lección. Now, I want you to go to where it says Monday, March 30th, 2020. So, let's click on that. Entonces, vamos a hacer clic aquí donde dice lunes 30 de marzo 2020. And let's go to where it says 033020, which is basically today's date. And let's get started. Now, let me just drag this up. There we go. And students, you will also need to open up, I've added a second material, which will be the Marquez reading for today. So if you're on your laptop or on your smartphone, please click on that and keep it open. Okay, entonces, favor, de hacer clic aquí, este principalmente en English One Lesson, y después aquí en Marquez reading. Now, let's go to where it says present. So hay que esperar unos momentitos para que se cargue bien. Y ahora, let's start the pre presentation. So you can see today is Monday, March 30th, 2020. Bienvenidos de nuevo. Now let's go to today's objective. So in today's class, students, I will be able to increase my reading fluency and demonstrate comprehension of the Marquez reading titled Lather and nothing else. Entonces, yo voy a poder aumentar la, mi fluidez de la lectura y además demostrar la comprensión del texto del Marquez reading Lather y nada más. So, let's begin with your warm-up. So, in today's warm-up, students, this should be slide number three. You will read the Marquez reading text to yourself before we begin. So if you like, you can pause the video and keep these questions in mind as we read. Entonces, antes de comenzar, alumnos, vamos a leer el texto de Marquez Reading a uh, ustedes mismos y favor de mantener estas preguntas en su mente mientras que nosotros leamos. For example, let's go to number one. Paragraph one. Which words best help the reader understand the meaning of the word stropping? El párrafo uno. ¿Qué palabra o palabras nos ayuda mejor a nosotros, el lector o los lectores, a entender el significado de la palabra stropping? Número dos. Number two. What do you think the details about the cartridge-studded belt with the pistol in paragraph two are significant to the story's plot? So, ¿por qué crees que los detalles acerca del cartridge-studded belt con la pistola en el párrafo número 2 son importantes al plot de la historia? A la, a, es esta la trama. Número 3. Number 3. How would you summarize what is happening in paragraph 3? ¿Y cómo podrías resumir todo lo que está sucediendo en el párrafo número 3? And finally... What do you think is the best way to describe the client that walks in? Explain. Entonces, última pregunta. ¿Qué crees tú que sería la mejor manera de describir el cliente que entra? Explica. So students, keep these questions in mind as we read. So if you haven't read the Marquez reading text to yourself, si no lo han leído, favor de leerlo ahora. Pause the video and then continue once you're ready. All right, students, you should have already completed the Marquez reading text yourself, scanning through it. But as always, every week we're going to go through it together. So students, before I continue, I will show you once again here where it says Monday, March 30th, 2020. Si no lo he encontrado, aquí debería este, abrir el Marquez reading text. Y lo vamos a leer juntos. We're going to read it together to improve our reading fluency. Okay, now we'll read it to times, okay? So, uh, for those of you following along in the PowerPoint, I've written the paragraph, or I've pasted the paragraph one by one. So I will read the Marquez reading two 
Times, pero en español hablante es aquí, he pegado, copiado y pegado, este, el párrafo número uno, voy a leer dos veces ustedes mi español hablante, es favor de seguir para mejorar su fluidez en inglés. I will read twice. Let's begin. He came in without a word. He came in without a word. I was stropping my best razor. I was stropping my best razor. And when I recognized him, I started to shake. And when I recognized him, I started to shake. But he did not notice. But he did not notice. To cover my nervousness, I went on honing the razor. To cover my nervousness, I went on honing the razor. I tried the edge with the tip of my t thumb and took another look at it against the light. I tried the edge with the tip of my thumb and took another look again at it against the light. Paragraph 2 Meanwhile, he was taking off his cartridge-studded belt with the pistol holster suspended from it. Meanwhile, he was taking off his cartridge-studded belt with the pistol holder suspended from it. He put it on a hook in the wardrobe and hung his cap above it. He put it on a hook in the wardrobe and hung his cap above it. Then he turned full around toward me and, loosening his tie, remarked, It's as hot as the devil. I want to shave. Then he turned full around toward me and loosening his tie remarked it's as hot as a devil I want to shave with that he took a seat with that he took a seat I estimated he had a four days growth of beard the four days he had been gone on the last foray after our men I estimated he had a four days growth of beard the four days he had been he had been gone on the last foray after our men. His face looked burnt, tanned by the sun. His face looked burnt, tanned by the sun. I started to lay on the first coat of lather. I started to lay on the first coat of lather. He kept his eyes closed. He kept his eyes closed. I started to work carefully on the shaving soap. I started to work carefully on the shaving soap. I scraped from slices from the cake, dropped them into the mug, then added a little lukewarm water and stirred with the brush. I scraped from slices from the cake, dropped them into the mug, and then added a little lukewarm water and stirred with the brush. The lather soon began to rise. The lather soon began to rise. The fellows in the troop must have just about as much beard as I. The fellows in the troop must have just about as much beard as, as I. I went on stirring up the lather. I went on stirring up the lather. But we did very well, you know. But we did very well, you know. We caught the leaders. We caught the leaders. Some of them we brought back dead. Others are still alive. Some of them we brought back dead. Others are still alive. But they'll all be dead soon. But they'll all be dead soon. All right, students, at this time, you should have already completed reading the Marques reading text aloud twice. Si ustedes no han terminado de leer el Marques reading en voz alta, allí donde están ustedes, favor de hacer una pausa al video. And please pause and continue when you're ready. All right, students, so let's go back to our warm-up questions. This is slide number three. So, let's review this. Let's answer number one. Hay que contestar el número uno ahora del warm-up. In paragraph one, which words best help the reader understand the meaning of the word stropping? 
En el párrafo número uno, ¿qué palabras mejor ayudan al lector, es decir, ustedes, a entender mejor el significado de la palabra stropping? Let's go back to paragraph one. So, let's go here. So, let's look at what it says. He came in without a word. I was stropping my best razor. So, what do we notice, students, from this? Well, we notice that all of a sudden, we're in a place where a man comes in quietly, or not saying anything. And then this person had their best razor. Entonces, ¿para qué usamos razor, rasuradora? Pues, normalmente, para afeitarnos. So, we use this for shaving. Now, so we can understand that the reader, or actually the narrator, must be a man. So we understand that part. So sabemos que ahora el autor, el narrador, es un hombre. Porque normalmente si una mujer estuviera escribiendo la historia, pues no estaría diciendo tal vez que se está afeitando y normalmente con afeitadora. Normalmente no se suele decir eso. And now look at, look at what the next sentences say. Ahora que ve lo que dicen los siguientes enunciados. And when I recognized him, I started to shake. But he did not notice. To cover my nervousness, I went on honing the razor. So stropping must be what? Something related to holding. Entonces debería ser stropping algo relacionado con agarrándolo, sosteniéndolo. How can we tell? Look at the next and last sentence. I can mirar el último enunciado. I tried the edge with the tip of my thumb and took another look at it against the light. Entonces, agarré la orilla ahí con la puntita de mi pulga, o de mi pulgar, y después miré hacia él este, contra la luz. Using these words, students, we can understand that stropping probably has something to do with using or holding. Entonces, usando estas pistas, usando estas palabras, nosotros podemos este, este, hacer una suposición que stropping debiese ser algo de sostener, agarrar, usándolo. Now, take some time to think about that. Let's go. Let's go back to the warm-up. Number two. What do you think the details about the cartridge studded belt with the pistol in paragraph two are significant to the story's plot? Think about that. ¿Por qué crees tú que los detalles acerca del cartridge studded belt con la pistola, el cinturón que tiene obviamente allí, arma, municiones, y con la pistola en el párrafo dos son significantes al plot, al tramo de la historia? Last week, students, remember, we talked a little bit about authors purposefully choosing their words. They purposely choose their words in order to highlight certain things or to build up tension. La semana pasada vimos un poco acerca de que cuando un, este autor está escribiendo su historia, escoge los detalles al propósito. Así en esta, en esta vez así para aumentar la suspensión, así como que, no la suspensión, sino así como que el suspenso, así como que toda la ansiedad de la historia, así, oh, mamá, viene algo. So, why do you think these details are significant to the story's plot? Well, let's look at paragraph two. So, meanwhile, he was taking off his cartridge studded belt with the pistol holder suspended from it. Mientras, él estaba quitándose su cinturón, que tiene municiones, que tenía la pistola suspendido de él. Stop and think about this. Hay que detenernos aquí. Hay que pensar. So what do we know about the first paragraph, just the setting? Well, a man enters a place. Meanwhile, it looks like the shopkeeper, the person narrating, was probably shaving. He was probably enjoying a very nice shave. Entonces, de repente entra una persona, sin decir nada. So we know this character is very, very serious. 
He's very serious in what he does. Mientras que el narrador estaba así, tal vez. Estaba así, y de repente cuando lo reconoció, empezó a temblar. You can tell that this character that entered is probably a bit dangerous because looking at paragraph one, the third sentence, he said, when I recognized him, I started to shake. So he's like, oh. so something about this man or this man's presence makes him nervous. Entonces algo cerca del parecer o tal vez el aspecto de esta persona lo pone nervioso. O sea, así como, oh. Thankfully for the narrator, for the author, he did not notice. So, so what makes us think that he's dangerous? ¿Qué nos hace pensar que es peligroso? Let's look at paragraph two. All of a sudden, he's taking off his belt, which has cartridges on it, of course, for guns, for shooting, with the pistol holder suspended from it. So, why do you think this is significant? ¿Por qué, por qué crees que este detalle es significativo? Why should we pay attention to the plot of the story? Think about that. Well, this is probably telling us, hey, this person is more dangerous than what we think. This person is probably just like, ugh, oh, o sea, oh, I mean, this, esto nos hace pensar, oh, caray. And now, before we continue to the next to the next question and the next paragraph. Take a look at this one. This is going to help us identify the story even bit more. The story is saying, Esto nos ayudará a identificar que donde está la historia, donde estamos nosotros. Look at what it says. Then he turned full around toward me and loosening his tie, he remarked, It's hot as the devil. I want to shave. Entonces, volteó hacia él. Y después soltándose la corbata le dijo, ¡Uh, caray, está tan caliente como el diablo mismo! Quiero que usted me afeite. So, what can we tell about the story setting? Well, going back to the first one, our guess was well, maybe the, the author was shaving himself. But, if the dangerous man tells him, hey, I want to shave then probably our guess on stropping wasn't the best one. Maybe he wasn't shaving himself, maybe he was just putting it back. Or maybe he was making it sharper. Because, he says, I want to shave to the narrator. So, it makes me think, hey, we're probably at a barber shop. Then, how do we know that? Look at how this paragraph ends. With that, he took a seat. So usually, you don't Usually, from the evidence so far in these two paragraphs, you don't, you don't have a seat. This is very specific. I want to shave, and you sit down. It's probably because we're in a barber shop. Think about that. Entonces, español hablantes. Entonces, ¿qué vemos? De repente se voltea a él. Y después le dice, ¡Ah, oh, caray! Es tan caliente como el diablo. O sea, yo quiero que usted me afeite. Pero nosotros suponimos hace rato que cuando dijo I was dropping my best razor, que tal vez el narrador se estaba afeitando, pero de repente este hombre peligroso le dice a él en el párrafo 2, oye, quiero que usted me afeite. Y después, ¿qué dice el último enunciado? ¿Cómo termina el párrafo 2? Y al decir eso, se asentó. Entonces nos hace pensar que tal vez en está un lugar este, de cortes de cabello, de ahí donde lo van a afeitar estilista, pero tal vez eso se me hace, es, visualizo esto como si estuviera en el viejo oeste. I imagine this is the old west, but let's continue. Let's go back to number three. So this is a pretty dangerous situation so far. Now, let's go to the question number three. Aquí la pregunta número tres. How would you summarize what is happening in paragraph ¿Cómo pudiésemos resumir qué está sucediendo en el párrafo número 3? Well, let's go. Let's go to paragraph 3. It says, I estimated he had a four days growth of beard. The four days he had begun on the last foray after our men. Foray, which looks like a hunt or a journey. And specifically, it looks like he's chasing somebody down. He says, after our men. Or maybe he's riding along with them. Entonces, ¿quién nos señala aquí? 
Yo calculé que él tenía un crecimiento de su barba de cuatro días. Entonces la última vez que tal vez se afectó fue hace cuatro días. Y después nos dice esto, esto muy importante. Los cuatro días que él había perseguido, había estado en un fore, un viaje, una cacería este, de nuestros hombres. How do we know that? That he was out? Well, look at the next sentence. His face looked burnt, tanned by the sun. Su cara, su rostro parecía estar quemado, así como bronceado por el sol. Usually, this doesn't happen unless you're outside. In which case, right now, it's pretty cloudy, so I don't think I'll get a good suntan unless I go to Houston right now and probably lay down on the beach. Probably not a good idea with everything going around. I'd rather stay home. Ahora, si sabemos nosotros que él salió afuera persiguiendo a los hombres, ¿cómo sabemos? Porque, ¿cómo se ve su rostro? Se ve quemado. Y después nos dice claramente el narrador que fue bronceado por el sol. Y esto no suele, suele suceder, al menos que se está afuera. Y ahorita como el clima este, está afuera ahorita nublado, los cielos están nublados, entonces, entonces si yo me salgo ahorita afuera, lo más probable es que no me voy a broncear. Now, look at what he says. I started to lay on the first coat of lather. So this is strengthening, students. This is strengthening our supposition that we're probably in a barber shop or in a, in a place where he gives shaves. Because he started to lay the first coat of lather. What does that mean? Well, for those of you who've had the experience, para aquellos ustedes que han tenido esa experiencia, when you go to a barber shop o van con un estelista, they put on, if you're, they're shaving you, or probably you've seen it on TV, they probably put on, you know, the little soap, ahí hacen el jaboncito así, y después ahí te lo ponen. And, how can we further tell, when we're in a barber shop, he kept his eyes closed. So, how can we summarize what's going on here? Well, it looks like he's just came into a barber shop. He's a pretty dangerous man. He went after a hunt of the men. And he just wants a shave. So, ¿cómo puede resumir esto? Básicamente, él estaba allá afuera persiguiendo los últimos cuatro días. Él estaba persiguiendo a hombres, cazándolos tal vez. O tal vez era una lucha, una guerra contra soldados. Pero en esta escena... En este párrafo solamente se sentó y le pidió, oye, ¿sabes qué? Me afeita, porfa. ¿Y cómo sabemos eso? Mira cómo termina. Cerró los ojos. Obviously, when you're being lathered up, you don't want soap in your eyes, otherwise it could burn. That's based on my experience. Now, let's go to the final question. What do you think is the best way to describe the client that walks in? Explain. Think about that for a moment. ¿Cómo crees tú que sería la mejor manera de describir el cliente que acaba de entrar? Es decir, la persona a quien, quien hemos estado describiendo. Describiendo. Explica. Well, for that, let's go back to the story. Let's go back here. I started to work carefully on the shaving soap. I scraped from slices from the cake, dropped them into the mug, and then added a little lukewarm water, and stirred with the brush. Entonces, ¿qué está pasando aquí? Está cuidadosamente, mira la palabra que usa, carefully. Cuidadosamente, ¿qué? Lo está afeitando, rasurando así, con navaja. But how would we describe this man? One tip I've told you students is always look for key sentences, either in the first sentence or the last sentence. I invite you now to look at the final dialogue. Look at what this look at what they're talking about. But we did very well, you know. We caught the leaders. Some of them we brought back dead. Others are still alive. But they'll be all they'll all be dead soon. So how would you describe this man, students? Examining those, the, that dialogue. Ahora, algo que les he enseñado a ustedes, alumnos míos. Es que cuando nosotros estamos analizando las partes claves de una historia, de un párrafo específicamente, nosotros casi siempre miramos el, los primeros enunciados o los últimos enunciados. Pero les invito ahora, vean el diálogo. ¿Qué es lo que está diciendo? 
Pero nosotros lo hicimos muy bien, ¿sabes? Nosotros atrapamos a los líderes. Algunos, pues, los trajimos ya muertos. Otros están vivos. Pero pronto todos estarán muertos. But they all be dead soon. Hmm. Now, using that evidence, how would you describe that man? ¿Cómo describirías tú este hombre? Well, I would probably describe him as ruthless, disciplined, dangerous, and, you know, somebody I wouldn't want to mess with. How would you describe him? Entonces, para mí, yo describiría este hombre como disciplinado, <laughs> terrorífico, así, así como que atemorizante, este, este, peligrosísimo. Pero ¿cómo piensas tú? ¿Qué piensas tú? Now, with that in mind, let's go to the exit ticket. For today's class, all I want you to do, students, is to complete the pretest using this week's Marquez reading. Lo único que ustedes qui quiero ahora ustedes que completen el pretest usando la lectura de Marquez reading. Now, where can I find it? Well, let's exit out of this presentation. And let's go to where it says Classwork for Sanchez English 1. All we have to do is click on the pretest. All of you should have access to this. Entonces todos ustedes vamos a hacer clic aquí donde dice pretest. Vamos a hacer clic aquí. And all of you should receive a copy with your name in it. If not, please tell me right away and I'll fix that. So, ustedes deben contestar eso. So, how do I answer the A, B, C, D questions? Well basically highlight, subraya y con marca texto aquí where it says highlight color o este puntita el símbolo, vas a subrayar con el color que tú quieras whatever color, ok I want this one ok that's the right answer and here, in the Marquez reading the narrator can be best described as what como podrías mejor describir al narrador and final, finally number three The details about the customer's beard in paragraphs here are significant to the story's plot. Esos detalles acerca de la barba del cliente son significantes, significativos en los últimos dos párrafos. ¿Por qué? Why? When you're finished, all you have to do is go back here and just click on, on the top. It doesn't appear for me. As you can see, this is worth a lot of points for today, as well as your due date. And just click on turn in. Entonces, cuando terminen, pueden hacer simplemente turn in Entregar, trabajo, entregar tarea, y ya. Y aquí pueden ver la fecha que ustedes me lo pueden entregar más tardar. All right, students, I hope you have a wonderful day today. Enjoy. Que disfruten un lindo día. Con su permiso.